break, break. What happened was. <laughs> hey friends, it's so nice to see you. It's today. The time is now. You are here, and the weather is outside your window. Today's guest booked the title role in a Broadway show directly after graduating, earning her a Tony nomination for her extraordinary work. Please welcome my friend and star of stage and screen, Xanthi Elbrick. Hello. Hi. How are you? Very well. How are you? Good to see you. It's been a long time. I know, it really has. Tw yeah. 12 years. Something like, like that. that. Yeah. I think the last time I saw you, we ran into each other at an opera in Chelsea. Is that right? That is right. Yes, it was. It was. Yes, it was a Tosca. sweet. Oh, my gosh. Good memory. Wow, Zach. Well, yeah, my that's friend, right. My friend was Tosca, so I... <laughs> <laughs> that's why I went to see it. <laughs> it was great. And of course, we met. Um, was it your Broadway debut? It was my Broadway debut. Was it? Yeah. Was yes. I, yeah, it was mine too. It was at yes. my first gig out of school. Wow. It's your first gig out of school, starring in a Broadway show. Tony nominated. This is a little scary. Yeah, you were incredible. Yes, that's um, right. Yeah, it was, it was an... Uh, a beautiful ill-fated show that closed in what four weeks really four is that weeks? How... six weeks it was quick oh god yes yeah. it was it was quick but but gorgeous and unforgettable and people still talk about it totally yeah. anyone that came for, you know we didn't have new audience members we just had repeat audience members. yeah <laughs> yep. anyone if, if I run into tells me they saw it four or five times that we had loyal you know loyal crew very right. sweet and that's the problem no new audience members just <laughs> and everyone got free tickets light, <laughs> light issue no I don't know if you were there but um whether you joined us I don't think so because Uzo and I were out um on the street in our costumes which is very faux pas of course but trying to sell tickets trying to sell yeah. tickets for the curtain did yep. you go out too? yep yep and we sang the hallelujah chorus we were we just all out on the street yes we were singing the hallelujah chorus at the tkts booth to try and sell tickets <laughs> wow yeah it was a different time yeah it was we should have chosen a different tune as well I mean, I <laughs> yep yeah i'm realizing why we didn't sell any okay yeah it was like may and we were singing a song associated with christmas on the streets of new york at tourists right. so, yes you know it's cool we tried though really hard and we did yeah i remember even calling the news like our broadway show is closing and we don't want it to and we're out in the street singing and they were like Aww. yeah we so don't care <laughs> oh my God of kids just trying to make it work yeah it was really beautiful and what a cast too and yeah really it, it was my first major thing out of school as well and I was so grateful to just be there and to watch that cast work I feel like I learned more about acting in in that month and a half just observing than I did in four years of school yeah I I was wondering, the reason I was kind of like staggering there with my answers, because I'm wondering if it's okay that if I ask you any questions. <laughs> totally. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so, um, sorry. I, um, I just wanted to know, because I know you were up, up in the in the choir, live choir, 40, 40 members. How many members? No, that was a cast. That was the cast. Yeah, How many in the choir? 20, 20 I think pretty insane yeah. so uh, you know did, did did you did you your bum ever get kind of tired sitting on the seats or were you always up and down up and down it was fine I mean it, the seats were cushioned <laughs> and, <laughs> um okay yeah and that sitting watching every night because I, I I'm probably like if you're anything like me I like watching things again and again to see all the changes yes but some, some people don't love that and they, they they're like oh I can see it once I'm done but it's 
it's really cool to watch something again and again. So did, yes. Okay. So you yes. were in that being fine to watch again and again. Absolutely. I mean, I could watch just Jan Maxwell for ever. God bless her. What did you learn from watching her? Everything. Never, Zach, I was never on stage with her. Oh. What did you? So I learned, you know, first and foremost, that it's okay to make something different every night and that you, instead of being complacent, right, you lean into finding something new and just digging for the truth and you don't give up, even if it's such a strange, obscure choice, you just go and go deeper and deeper she was always just digging and mining for truth and uh, didn't give up. So it you was, mean sometimes make a choice that was really may have felt obscure from your point of view, but then she would just commit and keep going. And then it would work. Oh my God. Yeah. Because it, you know, she saw where it was going, but as an, basically an audience member, you didn't but it, it made it as though you were hearing the material for the first time. Um, oh. Yeah. And, but I'd also see her turn upstage at times. Yeah. In, in a way that worked for her character. Yeah. And she would just reset. No. Yeah, she would reset. She'd like, it was like she tossed out everything she had done. And she was just like, when she turned around, she was a new person with a new idea. God, that's amazing. Yeah. It was God, incredible. Amazing. Yeah. And I remember also one time she went off in a rant backstage just saying like, what is this character? What's going on? Am I a lesbian? You know, and just went like on and on and like trying to justify, she was trying to like chart out her show and track it and, and, be like, how am I playing all these different characters? But in her mind, she was trying to make it one in order to, yeah, it was really fascinating. But I mean, one of the best actors that's ever lived, I think. Yeah, really. And yeah. and I, I, I kind of looked up her, not looked up, but you remember her husband, Rob. <clears throat> I kind of uh, got in touch with him much more after she had died and we met up for dinner and in, in, in the city. And I was asking him kind of about how they met and when they were courting and whatever. And, you know, he said that the whole time he knew her, you know, from beginning to end, there was just, he'd never met another actor that had ever worked that obsessively on anything, even inc including every audition. Like, um, wow. you know, just, just, he, he said, you know, it made me realize that this just wasn't my game, the acting thing. Because oh, he was, wow. you know, he was like, I, I couldn't, I could never match that, you know? Wow. Yeah, he said that she was just so committed to, to, to the work that the work never, ever ended. That's beautiful. And I know we hear about that a lot, sure. but I don't think it took a lunch break, you know? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, she really gave everything she had to give to, to the stage. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so our Broadway debut together, that was pretty magical to be in that group at Uzo and just like such a, what a cast. What a team. Yeah. What a, what a everything. Yeah. It was incredible. And so did you card with that production? I did. Oh my God. Did you? Yes, yes, but I wish I'd known you were in the same boat Whoa. because the equity person came to talk to us on that first day and said, you know, we had that meeting that you always have at the beginning of a show. And, and she said, is there anybody in here that is not, not equity? And I was, I was way, I don't know why I was shy to say that because <laughs> we had to eat through and I was clearly like playing a large part. And I was, <laughs> was the star. <laughs> <laughs> so I went outside after the meeting and grabbed her by the arm. I said, excuse me, I actually don't have my card. So, <laughs> and she took me back into the room and said to everybody, everybody, we have a new equity member. Oh, 
everybody was, but where were you, Zach? I needed some sol solidarity. You know why though? Because I don't know if you recall, we came late in the process. We were added in like 10 days before we went to stage. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. So I auditioned, um, I believe one week before what? our first day, yeah. And was it described as an, because you were an understudy, right? As no, well. no, I oh, was you, just in the choir, yeah. That's crazy that you weren't the, 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 the father, you know? Well, I was young and it was a different time. <laughs> that's, true, that's true, but I did assume that. So you came in, so it was advertised as choir in a Broadway show? Yep. Did you have an agent? I did, but I went to an open call and I was non-equity and I said, I'm here and you need to see me, I'm a bass, I heard you need basses. And they were like, you, we're, we're not seeing non-equity. And I wrote a crazy letter in like 72 point font and I highlighted it and I came back and I left it at the table. And the next day I got a call for an appointment audition. What? Yeah. And, and who then, was, who is it Laura Stanzik again for yep, the choir? Yep, yep. And so I went in, you all were in rehearsal at New 42 and I went in and auditioned in the room right next to the rehearsal room while you were rehearsing and they went like this at the end and then oh my god yeah and then the weekend passed and Monday morning I got the call and then I was in rehearsal with you a week later wow so then how long were you rehearsing two weeks before the show went up well, two weeks uh maybe three weeks before our first preview unreal yeah. yeah. And I had just moved to New York like six months prior. It was pretty wild. Yeah. Had you just been, had you just been, you know, auditioning like a crazy non ec for yeah. Six yeah, I was auditioning like crazy. I was um, working at a gynecologist's office in Soho. <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was working as a personal uh. assistant at Coach, the handbag place for the real estate. Um, vice president I was like working 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 I had a church job singing in a choir on Sundays and oh yeah auditioning gosh. oh my gosh and where had you moved from uh so I had been in school in Ithaca and then yeah that's right um, Zach I'm not that far from Ithaca no I know I, I see you venture to Cornell sometimes yes yes yeah. we went, well we went on one hike it's amazing you yeah okay so Beautiful. you were it, was it Ithaca College? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Okay, then you moved right to the city. I'm sorry, I really want to ask you questions. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you moved right to the city, and where did you live, and how did you find that first job? I lived in Washington Heights, and a friend hooked me up and was like, oh, I was an assistant to this gynecologist. You know, you can take my job because I'm leaving. Yeah. This is insane. Okay, so you had the gyno job, and then you also had the the church. I didn't know. I didn't know one was paid for church choir work. That's rad. Yeah, in New York. Which church? Uh, it was Lafayette Presbyterian Church in Brooklyn. Yeah. So you were traveling all over the place from Washington yeah. Heights. Yeah. Yeah, man. I was a bass. I do what I want. I was just doing it. I was a young kid with <gasps> holes in my shoes, running around town. You know. Yeah. So you got the gig and you, yeah. oh my. But you know what though? I thought, cause we signed year long contracts. Yeah. I thought when we closed that we still would be paid for a year. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Oh my God. You see, I missed that. Yeah. Oh Lordy. So did you leave all those other jobs? Oh yeah. Yeah. But it was great. Cause you know. Right. Okay. Broadway. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously just Come Broadway. On. Yeah. And <laughs> Did you get an agent out of that? Yeah, I had an agent and uh, like a really shitty agent that I didn't <laughs> stay with long. <laughs> okay, yeah. and then you get a better one? Yeah, I got a better one and I've been with them for 13 years now. And then something. what was the gig? Uh, South Pacific at Lincoln Center. <gasps> yeah. Of course, of course, which, yeah. of course, because I came to see it a couple of times because my friend Michael Arnold. Yeah. And not even knowing you were there until I heard that voice, of course, in that in that moment that is always so memorable for everybody. It was Aww. just dame, whatever, nothing dame. like it. Nothing like it. Yeah. Yeah. That so cool. It was really cool. But do you know, because I got my equity card from our show, I was able yeah. to audition at the open call for South Pacific. And that's how I got that. So 
Yeah. So, okay. All right. Go on. You, you go right. ahead. <laughs> so, so I want to ask you, you know, I, I witnessed your Broadway debut. It was incredible. You're a star. You're Tony nominated. It was so incredible. We were so thrilled and, and just to see your work honored that way. Um, so then this past year, I'm sitting um, in the pandemic and I'm watching everything on Netflix. And there you are on Emily in Paris, the most delightful romp. Was that was that a, a surprise when you saw me? Yeah, absolutely. It was thrilling. How funny. And did you know it was me having watched me as a little boy on stage? And then yeah, there's I, this- I'm familiar with you. <laughs> I wanted to say that the costuming on that show was so brilliant. Oh my goodness, it was so good. That- but- yeah. yeah. And that was your TV debut? Yes, I think it was actually. That's huge. I think so... it... Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so I quit after after Quorum Boy and a couple of other jobs. I quit and... You quit um, acting? I did. I didn't really mean to quit per se, but um, uh, the, I, I set up this headshot business and I, it kind of went crazy uh and you're you know what brilliant work, photographer you're very kind true very kind it's That's a, true a lovely thursday morning conversation when we receive this much kinder <laughs> so um yeah so i did that and, the, and it kind of took over and i found my agent was sending me more work for photography than than acting just so, other clients Basically. Yes, their clients wow. and then their clients and then their clients would say it's always been word of mouth. So like wow. Wow. because I, I first started grabbing clients when we were in Gorham Boy, like I was, you know, we met other members of the the Broadway community. So, right. you know, um, and so that kind of took off and I did that like hardcore for sort of seven years. Wow. Yeah. And then so or oh, eight, wait, sorry, longer, Zach, longer, because Quorum Boy was how many years ago? Well, it was, um, I mean, 13, 14 years ago. Yeah, 14. Okay, okay 14. 14 years ago. So basically I left for 12 years. Wow, wow. So um, with little p- bits and pieces here and there, like I kept up with voiceover work. I've, <clears throat> you know, been, been a, a, I've had one consistent gig that's that's um, a Star Wars video game that I do like monthly. And I've been doing that's that. That's amazing. Since, that's since Quorum Boy. And that's, wow. that's the coolest job ever because you can do it in your PJs, you know. Yeah. We love so, um, but I quit. And then um, my dear dad died like two years ago. Mm. And of course, um, you know, us Brits tend to be kind of repressed with our emotions. And uh, I was like, oh, my God, the only way I know how to deal with this is to go do some acting. Mm. I mean, I know lots of lots of us feel that way as as, as a performance. Right. Sure. But it became very uh, apparent. I was like, oh, God, I better I have to do something. I have wow. to do a show because I'm not able to feel any of these feelings. And I went in for this meeting and they were like, we really want to represent you. I didn't have to go in and sell myself, Zach. It was like wow. they were like. What do you want to do? Go on. Everyone would want to represent you. Like, oh, obviously, right. This is so true. No, come on. You're an extraordinary actor. You're incredibly unique. Your voice is like Sorry. butter melting over my brain. So, Heck, yeah. If this were true, I, I really it would be. It is true. It is true. I only speak the truth. So, okay. Well, I do believe that. But I'm I don't know. 0% surprised that somebody was like snatching you up. Well, that's very that's very nice of you to say well they 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 did snatch and and i and (laughs) and then then zach listen to this because i know you do your self tapes and we've all had to learn the self tapes yeah um they said in the meeting so you know xanthi things have changed a little bit and now there's all these self tapes are you cool with that do you know what that is i was like oh yeah totally cool didn't know what the hell that was right so went into sort of you know all the mode we all went into of like gotta learn this gotta get the technical thing down gotta and emily and i and luckily i you know you got you you either have a tape buddy who will always do it with you or you ring your friends right to read with you i had this one buddy that i was practicing and practicing self-tape with self tapes with and Emily in Paris came through and we were still studying like lighting sound like we were just trying to perfect the self tape sure and uh and there it was it got sent off 
the, the tape, I didn't know this until I got the job. It got sent right to Paris that they were filming. It got, you know, sent to Darren Starr, who is the, you know, he's Sex and the City creator and he's, yeah. he's they, created Sex Emily in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It got sent to him and Lily Collins because she's the executive producer on that show. Wow. And they watched it and they gave me the job. And, you know, I got a call from the agent saying, Anthony, you've got this gig. It's great. And, and uh, we couldn't be happier. This is a major win. I mean, when they said that, I was like, oh, I'm so set for life. <laughs> <laughs> Not the case, but, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. But actually, when they when they told me I got the gig, I was I said to them, oh, you mean I managed to conquer the self tape thing? Have I got it? And they were like, yes, you've got the self tape thing down. Amazing. That was really the main challenge for me. It was just getting the self tape thing down. That's a major win. But it was a great it was a great gig, and and uh, you know, yes, it was the first thing after a, a lot of years out of the biz. And uh, what an incredible way to return i mean and and also during a pandemic i know i know and you get I to mean, go to paris i know i was about to say have you have you traveled yet for work like in yeah. europe yeah uh, you not go? not since the pandemic but yeah i've traveled you know previously did you i mean <laughs> <laughs> Lee, <laughs> and did you go but for work have you gone and done some some gigs elsewhere oh yeah yeah i work in london a lot which is my fave and that's amazing oh yeah yeah we i do a lot of philip glass at english national opera on, in london it's pretty incredible pinch pinching myself you know yeah wow zach that's it's just... amazing though right you just step out into another world and you're like here i am and I'm yeah and you're now. with a completely different community yeah and because you're an artist you've been brought there because what you do is special like that's really extraordinary yeah that's true god i love the way you see things you should talk, <laughs> talk to you more often you know where to find me <laughs> <laughs> truly truly so oh. so so yeah that, um anyway you go because otherwise i have too many questions and i'll get i'll get into interviewing you again so you well i i was just thrilled to see you and i loved that show so much and oh, good i'm glad yeah i know it was fluffy and and people made yeah. fun of me for liking it so much but i just don't care i loved it and and you were extraordinary your character was brilliant and yes she's a fun character the fashion and all of it it was great it was brilliant I got to tell you, got to tell you that the majority of those costumes were um, Zara. I love Zara. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, you know, you you think that that these things are always sort of massive, you know, couture and everything oh, else. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, they're so clever and resourceful. Those those wardrobe folk, they really yeah. know how to find everything that looks super expensive for nothing. I just love sure. it. I think that's oh, yeah. so. Funny. Yeah. Did you get to keep everything? No, I didn't because they said, we don't know if you're going to be back. I was like, okay. Cool. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're back next season. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I don't think so. I think she's pretty happy at that you other place. She works. But maybe, uh, well, let's just dream big. I don't know. Totes, totes yeah. dream big. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I um, hope to see you on, on TV a lot more um you're terrific oh, thanks, Zach. thanks yeah. Zach. um how 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 is tv going for you yeah i love it it's great what did what have you learned about the difference in terms of when you were like mastering your auditions and working the camera and you know well i gotta say i learned so much this year from self-tapes because i think the unique thing is we have to watch ourselves right before we send yeah. it off and when we're in the yeah. casting office we don't get to watch we don't get to play back our stuff so right so to do 10 takes of something and watch them all and i don't know you, you i think you become a much better actor having to watch yourself like that um, you do you yeah. do and, and uh, do you ever get any have you had any people give you give you any direction along the way no wow <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not really <laughs> no i mean okay. i you know some callbacks where they give notes like try one like this or whatever but there's no yeah i'm just here in this room doing my thing it's pretty and wild. do you often come do you do you i would imagine you just always get the job 
that that's what I imagine. No, my love, I do not. <laughs> well, I'll just imagine that because that will conjure more, manifest more jobs for you. But yeah. what do you ever get? Do you, you know, we submit, we submit, we submit so many tapes. And um, do, do you, does do you find your agent ever does like give you any feedback or is it only when you get really close to something? Yeah. Um, you know, I, thankfully my agents are always happy with what I do. And, um, I even, my LA agent was so happy. He asked me to do a tutorial on how to self tape for his other clients. And I was like, Oh, okay. I'm doing this. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah, God, so, that's so awesome. Yeah. I mean, but you have to understand also like a lot of the things I go in for, it's like two line police officer, security guard, FBI agent. So it's it's um a rare experience when I get a huge packet and it's like 20 pages and it's like, oh wow, something to really dig into. It's it's more so for me, it's like a couple pages and it's some authority figure. Of Man. course, of course, yeah, you're never yeah. not going to have that situation on your hands. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> excuse me, but things with with fewer lines are often way more challenging anyway. Yeah. Because so, they, they just come out of nowhere, and and uh, you know. Do you just make a choice? What and how do you, how do you approach it? Well, um, you know, I, I always remember my first TV audition ever, which I actually booked, and it was it was exciting at the moment because I just moved to New York like a year before and I was like wow I'm gonna be a TV star now because I just booked my first TV gig you know what I mean <laughs> so it didn't work out yes. that way 10 yeah. years went by between my TV gigs but um but anyway I was doing South Pacific at the time and I went to Danny Burstein you know one of the best actors that we know and I just yeah. said you know I have a TV audition what do I do and he just said like do nothing and have a lot going on behind the eyes you know and I was like oh, okay you know and then on the way to that audition, the next day I was on the train, I ran into another actor and I was like, yeah, I'm going to my first TV audition. And she was like, don't do anything, just do nothing, you know? <laughs> so it was kind of funny that everyone was saying this and, and yes. Uh, and I think that was exactly what I needed to hear. And also now I'm in a place where I do a lot more, but I also understand how I appear on camera right so um how do you make that active exactly yeah like how did you how did you manage to do that like how have you managed to make that active well I think it worked for me in the couple things I did because I presented deadpan and I was playing you know um a federal agent and then a secret service agent and it was comedy also okay so okay. me being six foot six and looking the way I look and being deadpan and yep. having like you know, shade behind the eyes while saying, you know, whatever, like, please, I don't want to have to kill you today. You know, it's, it works. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got to say, it's far more interesting to have a lot of material to dig into and to make it really active and to have more than, because sometimes I do these self tapes and it's like, I'm sending a 20 second video, you know? Yeah. So do you find the choices that you make are the same that you would on stage, except you just don't show them? Um, that's a really interesting perspective. I don't um I don't think I've thought about that. Um hmm. yeah. Hmm. I'll get back I mean, to that. well, for example, if you sit down with a script, do you do you tend to just read it and then kind of get it in your bones and do it? Or do you sit there with a pencil and write things next to the next to the lines and make choices or whatever yeah I just get it in my bones and do it and then I try it a bunch of different ways and then okay. I see what looks good and come up that's with good few, to know because that, that's yeah, yeah yeah that's really good yeah but I you know I I definitely like to go uh very personal and and put you know one of my friends was like you know every role you do is just yourself right so yeah. so going going personal and finding something to excavate and put on it and a little okay that's really really good yeah I don't know it, it for no. me it always helps if I can figure out or just briefly give myself a couple snapshots of my life you know where'd I wake up and who's at home waiting for me especially with these police officer type things 
because generally those Zach, that's so brilliant. aren't necessarily invested in what they're doing they want to be home right? right yeah yeah oh you're so clever nah Hardly. That's really, really clever. I've never heard that. And you know, you know, I'd still do a lot of headshots and I have this conversation with nearly every client. Oh wow. No one has ever said that before. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. So that's really cool. It's a really unique perspective. Thanks. You know, the other thing that's interesting is I often would approach these characters and think of them as not myself because I'm I'm a musician, I'm gay, I'm like, you know, all these things that you wouldn't associate with those authority figure type characters yeah. I'm called in for. But I think allowing myself to be like, oh, no, this character could have a husband at home. Like, why Why are you stripping yourself away from it? And that helps okay. me too. Okay, yeah, that's just, so brilliant. Just to be me, you know. Zach, and then, it's genius. I'm, I'm waiting for your that. book. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> but this is really, really good. I mean, this is really, really clever. You know, I love yeah. it. I love it. Com coming from you, one of the finest actors I've ever seen. Zach, no. But, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Come on. Okay. All yeah. right. You, you, know, you landed a starring role in a Broadway show as soon as you graduated, and then you were nominated for a Tony Award. I'm done. Mic drop. Accepted. Zach, the thing yeah. is, though, about the thing is about that kind of work, though, I have to say that so many of my ways in first that those that those stage roles was using the good old Alexander technique. That was like yeah. the basis of my secret, and I don't find that that is something I, one could necessarily apply as effectively in screen auditions, for example. Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> I think there's a ver very different technique. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we know there's a different technique, right? But yeah, it's just different to into words because as like you, everyone has always just said to me, do nothing, do nothing. Right. Well, that is just so inactive. Right. As an actor, <clears throat> where's the verb? Right. But because so, we're coming from the stage, you know, and I think yes. it's, a, it's a specific thing that is said to stage actors. And yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Well, and the, the interesting thing about, about dabbling in LA now this past year. Yes. Like we're, we're considered like really incredible actors compared to the LA. Cause you know, we've been on stage in New York. It's like, oh wow, you're a real actor. You're not a model who's gonna figure out. How oh, to talk, right, of course, you know? <laughs> they get a lot of models. Oh my well, God. Just, you know, it's a different, it's a whole different world. But yeah, yeah it's really funny. You're like, oh, you're a, you're a stage actor. <laughs> but how, how is it just going out there and kind of just jumping in? Like, do you, oh, do, you yeah. just, do you need a strong network in order to jump in or do you just? Uh, I have a great agent out there, so that's been really incredible. But um, okay. and and I have a fair amount of friends out there. I'm sure you do as well. And I think that's really yeah, they've all gone there now. Yeah, and it's cool to just pick their brains and just be like, what's you know, what's what's the deal? And then just like everything, the intimidation of it strips away. And, oh my gosh, how fabulous! Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been a little tempted by LA recently. Well, I could see that. <clears throat> Where are you living now? I don't know. <laughs> in this room on green screen. <laughs> oh my God. But are you in New York? Sure. Yeah. You're in New York City. I'm everywhere. <laughs> you just became like God. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm everywhere. <laughs> okay. Great answer. Great answer. Where, I just wherever you see me on my Instagram, I'm there or was there in the last few days. You know how that is. Yes, I do. But you're my hero right now. I love yeah. the nomadic existence. <laughs> I love it. So what's next for you? Well, that The dreaded question for any performer, but what is it? Yeah, I'm actually doing a show on a ship at South Street Seaport. Yeah. When? Uh, August, September. Yeah, this, this is thing great. based on Moby Dick on a ship. So be cool. This is fantastic. It's all right. Yeah, it'll be wild. No, but I'm just so excited. I can actually come and see you. This all is right. fantastic. All right. Great. Yeah. Good. You know, and, we'll see um, what happens. How about you? What have I got coming up? Hmm. You know, at the moment, I don't know. Because I think, but you know, I have to say that through the pandemic, my brain has turned to mush. So when anyone asks me a question, I, I take a while to find the answer. I think for, I think I have a, a book, on, an audio book coming up. That's what, oh, that's my thing. Yeah. Fabulous. But I think um, one big thing, you know, da doing opera and stage and screen and everything, you know, people are always blown away by the 
timeline of TV and how you get your audition, it's due the next day, and then you film the next week often, right? So you have no idea where you're going to be next week. Like you think, you, you think you're going to be there in that chair in that library, but you might be in Paris. A library. <laughs> as one is in the library yeah, yeah. no I, you're right you never know and you, you could be anywhere uh, you totally could and that's yeah. you know, this is something that we need to have coffee soon and talk about more because i have more you know interesting questions to ask you about that oh. cool <laughs> um can i ask you some questions yeah do okay. it okay uh zodiac sign sag <gasps> Santhi. what i'm a sag you are what date are you december 7th oh that's you? rad one december one hell yeah that's amazing it all and i think you're now. are you are you are you open about your age how old are you i'm 39 39 oh we're pretty close what are you you're i mean 32. i'm a little older oh, we don't need to talk younger. about it <laughs> but yeah we're pretty close oh my god cool. i love that cool yeah neat love that favorite ice cream chalk coffee or tea Cho chocolate chocolate yeah yeah coffee or tea oh coffee or tea oh god we're moving so fast yep uh, coffee wow for brit that's big yeah i've been living here a while though hey yeah i like it yeah what about you can you tell me yours coffee yeah, I love that you say obviously in your tone. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Coffee. Okay, and go on. Uh, what? No, any, 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 any other quick questions? I'm just getting on <laughs> oh, right oh, now. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Um, okay, beach or mountains? Mountains. Hmm. Best vacation spot ever. Oh shit! This is hard. Probably uh, Colorado. No, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. Oh, that's, yeah, even better. Yeah. 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 Uh, first show you ever did in your life? Um, Jesus Christ Superstar. Who were you? Guess. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Jesus? No. <laughs> Herod. I was Herod. How old were you? Um, 10. <gasps> Whoa. It was That's pretty rad. That heavy show to do at ten. That's big. Were you like, yeah, especially if you're not a singer. Ah, uh, were you feeling it? But that role, you can kind of yell that role, you know, get away with murder with that. The whole one. show. The whole show. No, well, the whole show, yes, <laughs> but the Herod especially. Yeah. A lot of absolutely. talking singing, you know. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite musical? Um, I I love all Sondheim musicals. Hmm. Have you done a song time? Uh, no, Zach, I don't sing. Yes, you God do. No, I don't. Yeah, but I, I, I yeah. okay, all right. Well, um, no, and my favorite nostalgic musical, you know, is yeah. uh, Les Mis, you know, from oh, yeah. lo Childhood Love. Do you know you? what's cool is our um, theater from Corum Boy is where Les Mis premiered in New York. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, I thought of that every day. Got me through. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, we're on the stage where Lame is happened. I know, I thought that too at the time. I thought that's why we're not selling tickets. <laughs> <laughs> it's too big. <laughs> the theater's too big. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. But, but yes, no, I was very aware of that. It's a beautiful thing to know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. What is the first opera you ever saw? Um, I think uh, Rigoletto. Oh, interesting. But I grew up 20 minutes from Glimmerglass, so... Right. I, honestly, I've been going for so long. I, I don't know if I can really tell you. It made it, you know, I think oh. I think that was... That's totally cool. Um, okay, you can spend an entire year living as another person. Who is it? Um, wow, I think it would be Uzo. <gasps> That's an amazing answer. I don't know, it just came into my head. I think I would. I think Uzo just just grabs the joy in any given yeah. situation. I really do. And she was yeah. always that always that way. And she's con she's continued she's held on to it. Yep. Um For yeah. Sure. yeah. 
I don't know about you, but like, you know, I know a lot of people that have done really well. Yes. You know, that they still they still struggle in their daily life and yep. their moods and feeling happy and sad, but I think she's just really mastered it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. For nice sure. to how about you? Who, 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 you? Who's yours? Beyonce. Right? I don't know. Yes, yeah. But then you... With, okay, no, he's all right. He's all right. Whatever. That's... Yeah, I just want to try it out for a year. Yeah. Um, Uzo is incredible. And I regret... She always hosted a prayer circle before the performances, and I never went. I didn't even know about it. Yeah, I regret it till this day. Yeah. It was in like stage left wing. You were That's busy. What, you were starting in a show. <laughs> go on and write. That's why I missed it. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. 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 So I think it's all right. Um, yeah. Okay. You can go back in time to any time in your life and tell your younger self in that moment one thing. Um, <clears throat> there's no need to apologize. Mm. Apologize for nothing. Mm. And, 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 and this is in the context of our work specifically. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I like yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, okay. Last question. What's yours? Wait, what's yours? I need to know. Um, <laughs> uh, I think I would appear as myself now to myself in like middle school and just be like, you're fucking fabulous. Don't worry about a thing. Yeah. Were you worried in middle school? Oh, it was just a horrific time. Yeah. Yeah. But if I appeared as myself in like a cloud of smoke and like a fur coat and I was like, hey kid, that's my dream. Oh my God, you've got to do Angels in America. Uh, oh, you've got to do that. Together. Zach, after this, can you, is there any way you can send me a picture of you in middle school? I'll try and find one. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> I know this guy, but I really need to see. Okay, okay. what's the last last one? Uh, it's a simple question. What is the meaning of life? <sighs> oh my gosh. I mean, just live your truth. It could be it all be over in an instant. It'd all change in an instant. Just you know, live it. Absolutely. And you? Um, love and and beauty, beauty, truth, and love. How about that? That's great. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been a treat to catch up with you. Truly, truly. And um, when when do you start rehearsals for Moby Dick? Uh, like next week. Okay, good, good to know. And where are, are they in the city of rehearsals? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find all right, you. all right. I'll look forward to that. Okay. All right. Zach, you're the greatest. No, nah, you are. It's you. <laughs> you're. That's all for today's episode. Puppies and rainbows till we meet again.